Why did God hate Esau? Why did God hate Esau? There are a lot of people out there who have this really big problem with the fact that there are people out there that God, our Lord Jesus Christ, who is our Father, there are people who God hates. In this video, I'm going to put two links in the description box done by our beloved brother, our best friend, Alexander Hartley, um, about people whom God abhors. But why did, why did God hate Esau? Did God hate Esau? Malachi, chapter 1. Malachi is right before the book of Matthew. Malachi is the very last book in the Old Testament. Go to Malachi. Get your authorized version of the scriptures. And turn with me into the scriptures to Malachi, chapter 1. Malachi, chapter 1. Follow me along. The burden of the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi. I have loved you, saith the Lord. Yet ye say, the people, Wherein hast thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother, saith the Lord? Yet I loved Jacob, and I hated Esau, and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. I hated Esau. It does not say that he hated Esau's sin. It says that he hated Esau. Why did God hate Esau? Why did he hate Esau? Why? See, a lot of you, a lot of you, have a really big problem with God hating things. And that, there are many factors that equate into that, that correlate, excuse me, thank you, sister, that correlate onto that. The number one culprit, of course, I believe, uh, um, stems from Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth, Satan's church, Roman Catholicism, and his army, and her army, excuse me, the Jesuit order. Um, a lot of you, because of the Roman Catholic Jesuit created ecumenical movement of Vatican Council II, um, a lot of you have fallen for this God loves everybody, God loves you. And of course these uh, traitorous, abhorrent Christians in the church buildings are all about the ecumenical preaching, the love gospel. God loves you. God not, God's not mad at you. God's not going to judge you. And unfortunately, a lot of people cling to that, that God is a God of love. And yes, God is a God of love, but God is also a God of judgment. And he is known by the judgment that he executeth. Okay, God is first and foremost a God of judgment. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? Okay? There are people out there who God hates. And then what do you do? What do you do? You go to the Sermon on the Mount. Oh, oh you Catholics. Oh, you Catholics. Sermon on the Mount is beautiful. And for our instruction in righteousness, praise the Lord, doctrinally. The Sermon on the Mount does not apply for us today. Okay, that's how it's going to be in the Millennial Kingdom. When our Lord Jesus says, love your enemies, how many of you go to that and use this, sapper, this sappy, sweet and low, sugary sweet, confectionery, bro-hug, love stuff. And saying, well, Jesus said, love your enemies. Oh, the reason why he said that is because he as king is on the earth is there, okay? The king is there. So yeah, it's written for a different dispensation. But he said for his people to love their enemies in the fashion that he did in the Sermon on the Mount is because the king is there personally. And those people 
who we are to love in the kingdom of heaven, are going to have to deal with the king personally who's sitting on the throne at Jerusalem. Doctrinally, for us today in this dispensation, the Sermon on the Mount does not apply for us. But instruction and righteousness, how do you love your enemy today? By telling them the truth of Scripture. By warning them for the cliff that they're going to go <laughs> and fall off if they keep running. Okay? That's how you show love today unto your enemies. Okay? That's how you do it. If you want to show hate to your enemy, shh, be silent. Don't say anything. Or do like a lot of these coadjutors do. Cheer on! Cheer them on in their error and heresy. Yeah, you keep running there, boy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's how you show hate. That's how you show hate. But ultimately, why is one of the reasons that so many of you have a problem with God hating? Let's... Let's, let's strip it all away. Let's get real with one another. You don't want to... And also, too, remember, you like to go to Ezekiel chapter 18 and talk about how God, uh, you know, has no pleasure in the death of the wicked. And that is true. God would much rather be merciful because he delighteth in mercy. Yes, that's true. But there's a condition to that, isn't there? And what is that condition? Come on, you know it. You're just not accepting it. You know what that condition is. But that they repent. That they repent. And repent is not going from unbelief to belief. Repenting is not even repenting of all your sins. Repenting as being coming to salvation as a, to our Lord. The repenting is of your self-righteousness. Okay? That's what you repent of. Like I said in the previous video, you, you couldn't repent of your sins even if you tried at gunpoint, boy. It's not how it works. You're not repenting of your sins and then going to the Lord Jesus Christ. No, you're repenting of your self-righteousness. Okay? That's what it is. And see, in Ezekiel chapter 18, <laughs> repenting is the condition. Okay? That's the condition. God, you know, has no pleasure in the death of the wicked. No, he does not. He would much rather be merciful. Yes, he would. He delighteth. He delighteth in mercy. Yes, he does. But you got to repent. That's the condition. And that's what so many of you who like to go to uh, Ezekiel 18, um, the Sermon on the Mount, love your enemies. You know why you have a real bro big problem with God hating anything? And it's specifically for hating people, certain people who reject him and choose Satan and make God their enemy because they have chosen Satan. Come on, boy. Let's get let's get real with one another. You know why you have a problem with God hating people? Because if you're following a, another Jesus, have fallen for a false gospel, and are in effect God's enemy, then that means that there's a chance that God might hate you, isn't there? Isn't there? Yeah, come on, boy. Come on. Show a little stones on you, boy. Come on. Come on. Get real. That's what it is. Because, see, you who cling to this, God God is all love. There's, God doesn't hate anybody. And he does. There are people. He hated Esau. There are people God abhors. Abhor is extreme hatred. Okay? There are people God hates. And see, you want to reject that because if you are following another Jesus, okay, if you are following another gospel, just believe, okay? And you have made yourself an enemy to our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, 
by falling for by you choosing to uh, you know you fell for his trap. Uh, you're choosing to believe the lie that Satan has given you, and you are serving Satan. If you then admit that there are people God hates while you're following a false Jesus and a false gospel, then there's a really good chance that God might actually hate you then, isn't there? And you don't want to accept that. Come on, boy. Get, get a little stones on you. Do, are you examining yourself every day in the scriptures like you're supposed to? Hmm? Do you love it when it cuts you, boy? What if? Hmm? You don't want you don't want to you don't want to deal with that, do you? No, you don't. And then you actually exhibit hatred in defending something about God loves everybody. God loved and gave, yes. But God loving, present tense, every single person out there? No, 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 no. Why did God hate Esau? Genesis chapter 25. <laughs> when I came to the Lord on his terms, broken and contrite because it was my fault, it, 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 it is my fault that he died, okay? I was scared to death. The Lord scared the hell out of me. You know why? Because before I was broken and contrite and in horror of the Lord, before I called upon him and asked him to forgive me, guess what? God hated me. See, that's, that, that's why you disgusting... Perverse, easy believism devils are pawn scum because you don't address that there is none righteous, no, not one. You don't make it personal. You speak in general terms. And then you have these disgusting Christians who do the love them into the kingdom garbage, which is trash. Love them into the kingdom. We ain't building a kingdom here today. Who is trying to build a kingdom here today? Oh, that be Lucifer, the son of perdition. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. I was God's enemy. God hated me. And guess what? Guess what? Guess what? I'm not going to sugarcoat this for you, boy. Girl. You ain't saved. You are saved by your own belief. You believe in a Jesus that doesn't judge. You're lost. You're a child of wrath. You're a child of disobedience because you've heard the real gospel at some point in your life. You're God's enemy. Guess what? That means God hates you. Oh, oh, oh. But, but, I, he has no pleasure in that the wicked perish, but that they repent. Well, I believe that's not scriptural repentance. You've been lied to. Come on, tough guy. Come on. Come on, tough guy. So tough. Huh? Face it. If you are not saved, if you have not come to the Lord Jesus Christ on his terms, broken and contrite and fear of the Lord, call upon his name that he may save you. If you don't come to him on his terms, you've heard the true gospel, you're his enemy, he hates you. Oh, Brad, Brad, yeah, yeah, you don't like that. What are you going to do about it? You're going to get indignant against the person who's telling you that, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Why did God hate Esau? 
Genesis chapter 25, verses 29 on to verse 34. Please, follow me along. This is for our instruction in righteousness. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ruffle your feathers today, boy. Genesis chapter 25, verses 29 on to verse 34. And Jacob sawed pottage, and Esau came from the field, and he was faint. And Esau said to Jacob, and let's put a little dramatic on this. Feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage, for I am faint. Therefore was his name called Edom, red. Okay? Jacob, the supplanter, the one who grabbed his brother by the heel, as most uh, Hebrews would correct you. Thank you. And Jacob said, without hesitation, sell me this day thy birthright. Thy birthright. We're going to touch on that a little in this video. And Esau, let's, let's, let's add a little dramatic here. And Esau said, behold, I am at the point to die. <laughs> and what profit shall this birthright do me? And what profit? Thank you, brother. Shall this birthright do me? <laughs> and Jacob said, Swear to me this day. And he swore unto him. And he sold his birthright on to Jacob. Sold his birthright unto Jacob. For some soup. And he saw the whole time saying, And what profit shall this birthright do to me? Hmm. And look at verse 34. All Esau really wanted was a bowl of soup, a red pottage, because he was so faint, and I'm about to die. What, what will this birthright do me? Because I'm so faint, and I'm about to die because I'm so famished. So, he sells his birthright to Jacob, the one who grabbed his brother by the heel. Then, now look at what, look at Jacob's generosity. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and pottage of lentils. And he did eat and drink and rose up and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. His birthright. He despised it. He hated his birthright. Why, go to Philippians chapter 3. I, I've heard of this before, but you know what? Uh, I realize that most people's attention span when it comes to YouTube and other platforms, most people's attention spans are only on the most recent video. I understand that. Okay? Plus, your servant has been given quite a few number of videos to do. So, I get it. Okay? So, go to Philippians chapter 3. What? What was what was the gist of Esau there, who despised his birthright and sold it away for a bowl of soup? Philippians chapter three, verses seventeen on to verse nineteen. Different dispen different dispensation, totally. When Esau sold his birthright, that was before the law. That wasn't even under the law. This uh, is in the, in Philippians. This is disp dispensation. But <laughs> what Paul says here is absolutely the fact of why Esau despised his birthright. And because Esau despised his birthright is why God hated him. Let's read. 
Philippians chapter 3, verses 17 on the verse 19. Brethren, be followers together of me, and mark them which walk so as ye have us for an ensample. For many walk of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even, even weeping, that they are enemies of the cross of Christ. Because the cross is death. The cross is what? Self-sacrifice. See, that's, that's the repenting of your self-righteousness. You, you got to die. <laughs> Not literally, but you got to die to your self-righteousness. You got to get over yourself. Okay? Any fool, the fool has said in his heart there is no God, but any fool can believe. Yeah, yeah, so that must mean everybody's saved, right? No. The devils. James chapter 2, verse 19. Thou believest there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. Okay? Any fool who says it in his heart, there is no God. Any fool can believe. Not everyone is able to deal with and wrestle with the fact that they are no good. My mother, who died and is in hell, she could not get over the fact that there was none righteous, no, not one, that no, that no one does good, that there are no good people. My mother couldn't get over that, and that, because of that, she's in hell. She couldn't get over it. Not everyone can get over that. See, that's the repentance. See, that's the repentance. You couldn't, you couldn't give up your sin right now, even if you tried. You need to be broken of your self-righteousness. And in that brokenness of your self-righteousness, realize that there is a cure, there is an answer for you. But it's, it's your fault. It's you. It's you. You're the reason why he died. Okay? You're the reason why he died. Okay? Because... Your sin put him there. That's what you've got to wrestle with. It's a little bit easier than you think. But it's costly. Because right here where it says that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ. Because the cross of Christ is what? Death, self-sacrifice, humiliation, shame. Onto that, of course. Whose end is destruction. Whose God is their belly. Oh, 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 oh yeah, your belly. Um, you know, your belly is made up of tissue, flesh. So, whose God is their belly. And we saw, we just read, how Esau sold, uh, gave away his birthright for a bowl of soup. His God was his belly, his flesh. Whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is their shame, who mind earthly things earthly things and the earth passeth away like the flower like the grass okay the earth passeth away who mind earthly things whose God is their belly their flesh who mind earthly things as he sought it how about you is that why you got a big problem with the fact that God hates Certain people who reject him? Is that why you, you cling to Ezekiel chapter 18 and the Sermon on the Mount? Is that why you cling to that? Because ultimately, what happens when you acknowledge, yeah, there are some people God hates. What if it's you? What if it's you? <laughs> 
See, you disgusting, easy believers in people. You, you don't, you don't deal with this. Because you're so, you're so cocky. You're so arrogant. You're so full of yourself. Because you save yourself because I just believe. You go up another way. I have no respect for you. You easy believers and heretics. Those who fall for that, that's different. But you, especially here on YouTube, who are big proponents of that, I have no respect for you. Okay? No respect for you whatsoever. You're vile, disgusting, and grotesque. And you're going to go to where you're going, and you deserve to go there. Okay? Because guess what? Easy believe is devil. God hates you. Put that in your pipe and oh, roll that up in your cigarette and smoke it. Okay? God hates you. But those of you, besides those who knowingly what they're doing, teaching that heresy, what if God, what if it's you that God hates? When I came to the Lord broken, I realized, yes, God hated me. God hated me. I put him on that cross. It was my fault. I was going to hell. And see, that fear of the Lord, that you're going to go to hell, and a righteous God has every right to put you there. See, you, you wicked devil, you can't understand that because you're not saved. When you realize, it's, I'm going to... Lord, please save me. Jesus Christ, God my Father, save me. It, it just... It just comes. You don't get that. You don't get that. Because you're not saved. You're still in your pride. You're still full of yourself. Because you're saved by your belief. Good luck, buddy. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 21. What's the significance about this birthright? Now, this is during the law. This is the law, okay? And Esau, obviously, was before the law. We'll touch on that a little bit later, okay? But, Deuteronomy chapter 21, verses 15 on to verse 17. Here's the thing about the birthright. If a man have two wives, one beloved and another hated, and they have borne him children, both the beloved and the hated, and if the firstborn son be hers that was hated, then it shall be, when he maketh his sons to inherit that which he hath, that he may not make the son of the beloved firstborn before the son of the hated, which is indeed the firstborn. But he shall acknowledge the son of the hated for the firstborn by giving him a double portion of all that he hath. For he is the beginning of his strength. The right of the firstborn is his. Now, in the context from verses 15 on to verse 17, the children of these, uh, of either the beloved or the hated, the children themselves are not what is beloved or hated. How do you know that? Look at verse 15. If a man have two wives, like Leah and Rachel, okay, Leah, we all know, Jacob didn't really care for Leah, but he loved Rachel. And Leah was the one who had the majority of children for Jacob. And from the lineage of Leah came Judah. And who, who's really, who's the most significant one? We, yes, we all know David, okay? But who's the real significant one that came from Judah? You, you ought to know this. Okay, for those of you who don't, is it not evident that our Lord sprang from Judah? That's in the book of Hebrews. Go find it. Okay, from Judah came the lawgiver and Judah came from Leah, who was the hated. 
Okay? You see? But see, here in context, the hated, he is not being referred to onto the children, but onto the wives. Okay? But when you have a children, when you have a child who makes the choice to despise that birthright, whose God is his belly and uh, wants earthly things. That's different. That is not what is being explained in the context. Let's look at it again. If a man have two wives, one beloved and another hated, and they have borne him children, both the beloved and the hated, and if the firstborn son be hers that was hated, like Leah. Jacob, obviously, he preferred Rachel over Leah. And look who came from Leah. Okay? Look who came from Rachel. Joseph, yes. But Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. God manifest in the flesh. Where, uh, from, where, from whence came he? From what line? Seed of David, yeah. King of the Jews, yes. Judah, from Leah, again. Okay? The children, in context here from verse 15 on to verse 17, the children themselves are not being distinguished as hated for themselves, but because the wife of the said was hated. Does that make sense? Whereas Esau made the choice to give away his Natural birthright, which was his, for soup, because his God was his belly, because he minded earthly things, okay? Let's read this again, okay? If a man have two wives, one beloved and another hated, and they have borne him children, both the beloved and the hated, and if the firstborn son be hers that was hated, then it shall be when he maketh his son to inherit that which he hath, that he may not make the son of the beloved Firstborn before the son of the hated, which is indeed the firstborn. But he shall acknowledge the son of the hated for the firstborn by giving him a double portion of all that he hath. For he is the beginning of his strength. The right of the firstborn is his. Some would like to argue, well, then what about Ishmael? Uh, what about Ishmael? God chose Isaac, not Ishmael. Ishmael was brought about between um, Abraham, who is of Shem, and Hagar, an Egyptian, of Ham. Okay? God promised them Isaac. But Abraham, because he listened to Sarah, his sweet, godly wife Sarah, which she was, he listened to her, and they tried to bring about God's uh, promise by their own means, hence producing Ishmael. They went outside. God promised him Isaac. It is in Isaac thy seed shall be called. Okay? Okay? Well, in fact, yes, Ishmael is Abraham's firstborn. Yes, he is. And Abraham gave him a very good portion. Yes, he did. But God chose Isaac. God promised them Isaac. He did not promise them Ishmael. They, of their own accord, went to go establish what God promised on their own power, not waiting on the Lord. Okay? That's a different circumstance. God chooses. You, you got to get over that, okay? God chose the way of the cross. Brokenness, contrition, fear of the Lord, calling upon his name. It's not that difficult. God chose that. You, you're choosing another way. Hence, you're a thief and a robber. Okay? So the birthright thing, nonetheless, is very important. And see, that was Esau's. But Esau, his God was his belly, and he minded earthly things. Some will bring up about Esau, good old Esau, uh, one of the main reasons why God hated him was because he uh, married outside of his kindred. That had a part to do with it, I reckon, but there are some out there who say that Esau did it out of vindictiveness and evil. I disagree with that. Uh, was Esau an evil, uh, evil guy? I, yeah, he was. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he was. He despised his birthright. God hated Esau. 
Okay, that doesn't mean that his descendants today, of course, or even back then, could have been right with God. That doesn't mean that. Because uh, after all, Esau and Jacob were brothers. Yes, but God said he hated Esau. Okay, but the thing about the marriage, I, you, you know, Samson, I liken Esau onto Samson in a way. How so? I don't think Esau was the sharpest knife in the drawer. I really don't. I don't think Esau was the brightest bulb in the box. Go to Genesis chapter 26, looking at verses 34 and verse 35, okay? 26. Wait, 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 wait. Where was that? What was, uh... Oh, hold on. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Oh, I beg your pardon, brethren. <laughs> it, would have, <laughs> it would have helped if I were in the book of Genesis. <laughs> Genesis chapter 26. <laughs> I'm still in Deuteronomy. <laughs> Genesis chapter 26, verses 34 on to verse 35. And Esau was 40 years old when he took to wife Judith, the daughter of, daughter of Beri, the Hittite, and Bashmoth the daughter of Elon the Hittite, which were a grief of mine unto Isaac and to Rebekah. A grief of mind. So, did Esau do that purposely just to grieve them? One could have, you really, you know that we know, we know from Genesis chapter 25 that Esau despised his birthright, hence God hated him. Okay? We know that. This is what? Genesis chapter 26. So because he despised his birthright, then he goes and marries outside his kindred, which are a grief of mind onto Rebecca, onto Isaac and Rebecca. Okay? Did he do that purposely just to irritate his mother and father? That is possible. But then again, you got to remember, this is, and this is what I hold to. Um, Esau was not that bright. He sold his birthright for soup. What? what look at uh, 25 again. Look at verse uh, in uh, uh, Genesis chapter 25, verse 32. And Esau said, Behold, I am at the point to die, and what profit shall this birthright do to me? That Esau was stupid. <laughs> okay? Okay? I'm sorry. Esau was, was stupid. Okay? I, was he a vindictive man purposely seeking to irritate his mother and father? I think it's more rather that Esau was an idiot. That he was just plain stupid. Kind of like Samson. He wasn't, he wasn't playing with a full deck. He wasn't the sharpest knife in the drawer. He wasn't the brightest bulb in the box. Would I say that to Samson's face? <laughs> no. <laughs> but, okay, I don't think, like I said, I don't think Esau was the smartest. And go to, it, and go to Genesis chapter 28, verses 8 and 9. Okay? Again, Esau going outside of his kindred, which was forbidden. Okay? Check this out. Genesis chapter 28, verses 8 and 9. Okay? And Esau, seeing that the daughters of Canaan pleased not Isaac his father. Okay? Such as his previous wives. Okay? He, he, we recognize here with this verse that, okay, Esau figured it out. It's like, oh, oh, my father and mother, they don't like my wives. But boy, they sure do look pretty, don't they? They can move. Never mind. He minded earthly things. His God was his belly, remember? His God was his belly. He wasn't that bright. Look at verse 9. Then went on to, then went Esau unto Ishmael and took unto the wives which he had. Mahalath, the daughter of Ishmael, Abraham's son. Don't, don't, don't forget that. The sister of Nebajah to be his wife. And there's some out there who says, well, at verse 9, see, he purposely went to Ishmael just to tick off his father. I don't think so. How, why do you say that? 
of Ishmael, Abraham's son. What am I getting at? Esau wasn't that bright. He married Canaanite women. And then a little while, uh, a little while after, he figures out, oh, my father didn't like them. Oh, here. Ishmael is related to Abraham. Oh, okay. So that means that my father will be okay because Ishmael is related to Abraham. So I'll go to Ishmael. Not bright. Ishmael, uh, uh, Esau, not bright. Not too smart in the head. Was it that he was a vindictive, vile, evil man? God hated Esau. Yes, he did. Because he chose soup over his birthright. Yes, he did. But as far as him marrying these outside of his kindred, did he do that purposely to irritate his father and mother? I don't think so. More rather, because look at that, verse 9. I, his, I bet you his reasoning was like, oh, hey, 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 they're related to, they're, they're my cousins. Hey, I'll go to them. Yeah, because Ishmael is Abraham's son, after all. He's the first one, so I'll go to them. Then my father will be pleased. That's what I more uh, more think about Esau, that about him marrying outside of his kindred. I don't think it was uh, him intentionally wanting to be odious unto his mother and father. Onto his father and mother, excuse me. I think, like I said, and I stand by this, and I'll, I would like to talk to some people, uh, if they ever had time, yeah, <laughs> about this. Yeah, right. Um, I, w I would talk to some brethren who disagree with me on that. I think Esau was just not that bright. Okay? Did this cause uh, make it worse for him in God's eyes? <laughs> Absolutely! But he of himself... He wasn't the sharpest knife in the drawer. Okay? Now go to Genesis chapter 27. Genesis chapter 27. Now, he despised his birthright. Okay? Hence, God hated him. Because the birthright was naturally his. But because he wanted, he uh, preferred the things of the world, his God was his belly, his flesh. Genesis chapter 20. Let's begin at verse 6 on to verse 17. This is important. Now Isaac tells Esau, Hey, go get me some venison so that I can bless you before I die. And he's done blind pretty much. And Esau's like, Okay, Dad, <laughs> I'm going to go out and get you some venison. So he goes out and gets him some venison. Remember, Esau ain't that bright. Nope. What Rebecca does. Rebecca, by the way, stems from the lineage of Laban. And when you look in uh, Genesis chapter 24 about how Abraham's servant came to Laban, okay, to get Rebecca, they were at first like, praise the Lord, hey, this is God's doing, go with you. And then when it came time for the, uh, for the servant to take Rebecca back, they, uh, the family of Laban, were like, oh, hold time out, let's, let's wait 10 days, okay? Let's wait, let's wait. Very similar to what Laban did to Jacob, okay? See, Jacob is known as the one who took his brother by the heel, the supplanter. But then Jacob pretty much met his match when he went to Laban, okay? So that, that mentality of Laban, that trickery, if you will, check this out. And Rebekah, who came from Laban, spake unto Jacob her son, saying, Behold, I heard thy father speak unto Esau thy brother, saying, Bring me venison, and make me savory meat, that I may eat, and bless thee before the Lord, and bless thee before the Lord before my death. Now therefore, my son, obey my voice according to that which I command thee. Go now to the flock, and fetch me from thence two good kids of the goats. And I will make them savory meat for thy father, such as he love, as such as he loveth. And thou shalt bring it to thy father, that he may eat, and that he may bless thee before his death. And Jacob said to Rebekah, now pay attention to this. And Jacob said to Rebekah his mother, Behold, Esau my brother is a hairy man, and I am a smooth man. My father peradventure will feel me. 
and I shall seem to him as a deceiver, and I shall bring a curse upon me, and not a blessing. And his mother said unto him, Upon me be thy curse, my son. Only obey my voice, and go fetch me them. Verse 13, You do not read anything in the scriptures about Jacob after he get, goes away. Um, you never read anything else about Jacob ever seeing his mother again after he goes away to her, her, to her family, Laban. You never see or read anything about Jacob ever seeing his mother again. And his mother said unto him, Upon me be thy curse, my son. After this, after Jacob went away, yeah, the curse was on her because she never got to see her son again. Consider that. For those of you who want to coincide and work with those who are enemies of God, just keep that in mind. Just keep that in mind. Okay? And he went and fetched and brought them to his mother. And his mother made savory meat, such as his father loved. And Rebekah took goodly raiment of her eldest son Esau, which were with her in the house, and put them upon Jacob, her younger son. And she put the skins of the kids of the goats upon his hands and upon the smooth of his neck. And she gave the savory meat and the bread which she had prepared into the hand of her son Jacob. Okay? So now let's read from verses 18 now on to verse 29. Okay? And he came unto his father, Jacob, with goat skins on his hands and on his neck, wearing his brother's clothes. Okay? So the smell and touch. Remember, he couldn't see. But he could smell. He had a good ear. He had a good nose. And he could hear. And he had good sensory things with his hands. Remember the hearing thing. And he came unto his father and said, My father. And he said, Here am I. Who art thou, my son? And Jacob said unto his father, I am Esau, thy firstborn. I have done according as thou obeyedest me. Arise, I pray thee, sit and eat of my venison, that thy soul may bless me. Took his brother by the heel, supplanter. And Isaac said unto his son, How is it that thou hast found it so quickly, my son? And he said, hey, Look at this. Because the Lord thy God brought it to me. Now hold up. Remember verse 20 here, where, where Jacob says, Because the Lord thy God brought it to me. Okay? Esau sold Jacob his birthright. Okay? Hence God hated Esau. And Jacob here, through the subtlety of his mother, through deception, goes in and literally steals the blessing from his father. Why? Because the Lord thy God brought it to me. Because Esau sold him his birthright and God hated Esau. And this also plays into the part where Jacob wrestles with our Lord, our Father, Jesus Christ, where Jacob wrestles with God, okay? And then he becomes Israel. He touches the hollow of his thigh, and God changes his name because there was a change in him after he wrestled with God. Because at first, he, he grabbed his brother by the heel to steal the blessing, but then he got the blessing because he wrestled with God. See, he wrestled with who he, had, who he was. Because remember, when he faced Esau again, he was terrified of Esau, and rightfully so. So he was wrestling with what he had done when he was wrestling with God. See, that's the difference. But let's continue. This is, this is key. Scripture is explaining itself. 
because the Lord thy God brought it to me. Okay, now let's continue. And Isaac said unto Jacob, Come near, I pray thee, that I may feel thee, my son, whether thou be my very son Esau or not. Oh, beg your pardon. And Jacob went near unto Isaac his father, and he felt him and said, Now look at this. The voice is Jacob's voice, but the hands are the hands of Esau. And he discerned him not, because his hands were hairy, as his brother Esau's hands. So he blessed him. Look at verse 24. And he said, Art thou my very son Esau? And he said, I am. Now hold up. Hold up. Okay? Look at verse 22. And Jacob went near unto Isaac his father, and he felt him. And he said, The voice is Jacob's voice, but the hands are the hands of Esau. So he obviously had enough sense in him to recognize Jacob's voice. Did he not recognize Esau's voice? Later on, we're, and we're going to see that when Esau comes in, he's like, Who are you? What, what was going on? Are we supposed to believe that East, that Isaac couldn't discern his own vo uh, his own sons by his hearing? His eyes were gone, but he could smell. He could smell the raiment. He could feel pretty good. He could hear. Why, why does it seem, in verse 23, and he discerned him not? Are we supposed to believe that Isaac was like Esau? Kind of, <laughs> no. What was this? Like I told you. Verse 20. And Isaac said unto his son, How is it that thou hast found it so quickly, my son? And he said, this, this, is, this explains it, because the Lord thy God brought it to me. God hated Esau because Esau sold away his birthright to Jacob for a bowl of soup because unto Esau his God was his belly and he minded earthly things. Okay? Esau, uh, Jacob, supplanter, the one who took his brother by the heel as the Hebrew individual corrected me before. Okay? Grabbed his brother by the heel, which means supplanter nonetheless, but never mind. Okay? So because of that, God hated Esau. And later on, Jacob would be redeemed, facing what he had done, repenting and wrestling with God over what he had done because he was about to face his brother, okay? That's the difference between Jacob and Esau, okay? Esau never really repented. Never repented. Jacob wrestled with God because he was afraid to face what he had done. He was afraid to face judgment for that he stole away from Esau. See? That's the difference between Jacob and Esau. Okay? But see, the important thing is, like it says in verse 20, because the Lord thy God brought it to me, because Esau sold away in his birthright. Hence, God hated Esau. And also too, okay? Also too, let's go to Luke chapter 24. Luke chapter 24. Is there another incident in Scripture where God withheld someone's sight from discerning something? Uh, yeah, yeah. Luke chapter 24. Luke chapter 24, verses 13 on to verse 16. After the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, by the way. Luke chapter 24. Verses 13 on to verse 16. And behold, two of them went that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem about three score furlongs. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and with, went with them. Look at verse 16. But their eyes were holden that they should not know him. 
So Jesus himself, God our Father, went alongside these two guys on the road to Emmaus. And it says here that their eyes were holding that they should not know him. Hmm. So God withhold their eyes from recognizing that it was the Lord. Really? Really? Hmm. And then uh, later on, I mean, you can, you can see some very delicious um, sarcasm from our Lord, you know, where he's like, you know, playing kind of, playing it up on them. It's like, what, why are you guys all sad? And they're like, have you not heard what happened? And our Lord's like, uh, what things? <laughs> okay. But then they go in and they, uh, they go to have bread and whatnot. And um, he, he opens their understanding to understand the scripture. Now he expounds to them all the things in the scripture. And then uh, verse 30 on to verse 32 in Luke 24. And it came to pass as he sat at meat with them. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, sitting at meat with these two guys who still yet didn't know that it was Jesus. And it came to pass as he sat at meat with them, he took bread and blessed it and brake and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened, and they knew him. They're like, whoa! And he vanished out of their sight. You know how in the book of Hebrews it says, uh, don't be neglectful to entertain strangers, because some, time, uh, because some have entertained angels unawares? Okay. You ever entertained a stranger? Well, you too terrified nowadays, yeah? Yeah. The point is, they didn't know that God the Father was right there because their eyes were holding. Then he blessed and break and gave them bread. Okay. That's not the Eucharist, you wicked Catholic. Get over yourself. Okay. Your religion is of Satan. You're going to hell if you're a Catholic. You need to repent and get out of it, okay? Shush! Wasn't the Eucharist there, okay? But, verse 31 again. And their eyes were opened, and they knew him, and he vanished out of their sight. And they said one to another, Did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us by the way, and while he opened to us the scriptures? So you see a perfect example of God holding someone's eyes so they won't recognize him or recognize certain circumstances, okay? Similar, go to 2 Kings. 2 Kings chapter 20, 2 Kings chapter 6, excuse me. 2 Kings chapter 6. Others have done this, and we're just touching on this, just to show you. Because when you read that, okay, how could he have not... Okay, he, he said himself, it's, it's Jacob's voice, but it feels like Esau. It even smells like Esau. What's going on? What, was Isaac that dense? The Lord thy God brought it to me. It was of the Lord because Esau despised his birthright. Okay, that's why. 2 Kings chapter 6, verses 17 on to verse 19. Ah, uh, you know, let's read verses 13 on to verse 18. A little bit more con uh, context on this, okay? 2 Kings chapter 6, verses 13 on to verse 18, okay? And he said, Go and spy where he is, that I may send and fetch him. And it was told him, saying, Behold, he is in Dothan. This is, um, they were looking for, um, what's his name? Um, Elisha. The prophet, okay? Elisha, not Elijah. Elisha, because he was telling the, what the king was doing to the king of Esau, and they, this, they were said to him that Elisha, the prophet, tells the king of Israel what you dream and whatnot, so they send the guys after to get uh, Elisha. Okay, that's the backstory. Should have said that earlier. But let's continue, okay? Therefore sent he thither horses and chariots and a great host, and they came by the night and compassed the city about. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, an host compassed the city, both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, 
How shall we do? Oh, he saw the he saw the wind boisterous. He saw everything out there. You know, it's like, oh wow, I'm a little scared. And he answered, Fear not. For there be for th for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. You know that two hundred million man army that our Lord's just gonna say, "Go away!" And they're he he might literally just say, "Go away!" And two hundred million men like a puff, boy. Okay, greater is he that is in you, the Holy Ghost, God our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, then he, the prince of the power of the air, the little G God of this world, Satan, that is in the world. Okay, let's continue. And Elisha, Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord, the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. And when they came down to him, Elisha prayed unto the Lord and said, Smite this people, I pray thee, with blindness. And he smote them with blindness according to the word of Elisha. Get a load of that. The young man, he couldn't see. Then Elisha prayed and the Lord opened his eyes. This differs to what is in Isaiah chapter 44. Go to Isaiah chapter 44. Okay, because it was of the Lord on Isaac's behalf. Okay, it was the Lord thy God brought it to me. The Lord was holding God, uh, Isaac's eyes. Isaac's eye, he was blind. Okay. But how Isaac couldn't discern his between his two sons' voices, okay? To understand that, well, the voice is Jacob's, but it feels like Esau. And then Esau comes in again, and it's like, who are you? And then he says, and then he figures it, it figure, he, you know, it's given to him. It's like, oh boy, we'll, we'll look at that, okay? But in the Lord holding the eyes of the guys on the uh, road to Damascus and opening the eyes of the servant, that differs from what is in Isaiah chapter 44. See, Isaac's eyes were blind because of his old age. So in him doing what he did out of kind of an ignorance was of the Lord, not of his own intention of anything that he had done sinfully himself. See, but what happens when someone has rejected? Go to Isaiah chapter 44, verses 18 and verse 19. Now, the context of Isaiah 44 is from 9 to verse 20. About those who choose an idol. Who choose that which God does not delight in. Okay? Can you handle a little context here, boy? Let's read it then, shall we? Let's read it. Let's, come on. Isaiah chapter 44, verses 9 on to verse 20. Then we'll get back to Genesis chapter 27, okay? They that make graven image, they that make a graven image are all of them vanity, worshiping something other than God. Oh, their own belly, earthly things. And their de delectable things shall not profit. And they are their own witnesses. They see not, nor know, that they may be ashamed. Who hath formed a little g God, or molten a graven image that is profitable for nothing? Behold, all his fellows shall be ashamed. And the workmen that, and the workmen, they are of men. Let them all be gathered together. Let them stand up. Yet they shall fear, and they shall be ashamed together. The smith worketh with the tongs. The smith worketh with the tongs, both worketh in the coals, and fashioneth it with hammers, and worketh it with the strength of his arms. Yea, he is hungry, and his strength faileth. 
He drinketh no water and is faint. Similar to Esau, because his God was his belly, who minded earthly things. You're going to see about how he minded earthly things. Okay, let's continue. The carpenter stretched out his rule. He marketh it out with a line. He fitteth it, he fitteth it with planes. And he marketh it out with the compass and maketh it after the figure of a man. Yeah. According to the beauty of a man, that it may remain in the house. And they serve the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. That's from that's basically what Esau did. Let's continue. Okay. He heweth him down cedars, and taketh the cypress and the oak, which he strengtheneth for himself among the trees of the forest. He planteth an ash, and the rain doth nourish it. Then shall it be for a man to burn, for he will take thereof, and warm himself. Yea, he kindleth it, and baketh bread. Yea, he maketh a god, and worshipeth it. He maketh it a graven image, and falleth down thereto. He burneth part thereof in the fire. With part thereof he eateth flesh. He roasteth roast and is satisfied. Yea, because he was so faint. God is their belly. Yea, he warmeth himself and saith, Ah, I am warm. I have seen the fire. We walk by faith, not by sight. And the residue thereof he maketh a God. Even his graven image, he falleth down unto it, and worshipeth it, and prayeth unto it, and saith, Deliver me, for thou art my God. God in this chapter right here in Isaiah is showing you the utter stupidity of worshipping things that are not God. I'm not going to be nice to you. You're worshipping Mary, you're worshipping Allah, you're worshipping Buddha. Any one number of the Hinduism gods, Taoism, um, it's vanity. It's stupid. Okay? There is only one way. Jesus Christ, God our Father. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. Okay? It's pretty exclusive. Let's see. Making images, something to place in place of God. And God here is just showing you just how foolish, how ignorant, how stupid it is. If you're not serving the true God, you're serving Satan. I love you. That's pretty stupid. Fortunately, too many of you will only find out that before it's too late. Or after it's too late, I hope. Or I, I should say, I hope you find out before it's too late and repent and get saved. But most of you will not. That's the sad part. Let's continue. Verse 18. They have not known nor understood. For he has shut their eyes. Satan in the Garden of Eden said. If you eat thereof your eyes shall be opened. And ye shall be as gods knowing good and evil. Meaning you shall be able to judge what is good or right for yourself. So because you judge what is right yourself and have nothing to do with God and don't want to listen to him, what he says is right, but you want to follow your own God, your own self, God's going to give you over to that. You want that? Then he's going to shut your eyes because you have chosen what he dislikes. You're serving Satan. By serving yourself, you're serving Satan. Okay? So... You want to choose that, God's going to give it to you. What does it say here? They have not known nor understood, for he has shut their eyes that they cannot see, and their hearts that they cannot understand. And none considereth in his heart, neither is there knowledge nor understanding to say, I have burnt part of it in the fire. Yea, also I have baked bread upon the coals thereof. I have roasted flesh and eaten it. And shall I make the residue thereof an abomination? Shall I fall down to the stock of a tree? Catholic? I don't care if I offend you in this. You're not worshiping the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, the God of the Scriptures, 
according to his uh, his dictates, according to his standard. Number one, you lost. Number two, you're unwise. It's stupid. Okay? Following anything else but our Lord Jesus Christ, according to the scriptures, according to his commandments, is stupid. Following anything else but our Lord, according to his commandments and his statutes and his ways, his conditions, doing anything else but that is stupid. He feedeth on ashes. A deceived heart hath turned him aside, that he cannot deliver his soul, nor say, Is there not a lie in my right hand? Why? Because his eyes have been shut, because he chose that what God delighted not in, just like Esau. See, the, the, what we looked at, we looked at this because these are different, okay? The servant of Elisha, only saw this. He wasn't choosing anything against God. He's like, whoa, hey, oh, hey, <laughs> Elisha, uh, what, what? Chill. Lord, open his eyes. And then say, oh, oh, I get it. And then the two guys on the road to Emmaus. It's like, don't, haven't you heard of this? What things have happened? God the Father. What things? <laughs> What things have happened? What are you talking about? <laughs> okay? These are different circumstances. These are different things. What's being described here in Isaiah chapter 44, he's describing people who go against him and want to make themselves their own gods or make up little Mary statues or Buddha statues and worship them. Okay? Hence, going against God, worshiping themselves, worshiping the God that they look at in the mirror. Because that's, when you get right down to it, your God is your belly, and you mind earthly things. So, now go back to Genesis chapter 27. Okay? Genesis chapter 27. See, it's, like I said, we went through that to show you the difference between these, these things, okay? Because with what happened to Isaac here, okay, back in Genesis chapter 27, it's verse 20. Because the Lord thy God brought it to me. Okay? Now, let's pick up from verse 24. Uh, verse 25, because we read 20, verse 24. And he said, bring it, to, bring it near to me, and I will eat of my son's venison, that my soul may bless thee. And he brought it near to him, and he did eat. And he brought him wine, and he drank. And his father Isaac said unto him, Come near now, and kiss me, my son. And he came near and kissed him. And he smelled the smell of his raiment and blessed him and said, See, the smell of my son is as the smell of a field which the Lord hath blessed. Therefore, God give thee of the dew of heaven and the fatness of the earth and plenty of corn and wine. Let people serve thee and nations bow down to thee. Be Lord over thy brethren, and let thy mother's sons bow down to thee. Cursed be every one that curseth thee, and blessed be he that blesseth thee. So see right there, as that blessing was on to Abraham and also on to Isaac, it got passed on to Jacob because Esau, the firstborn, whose right it was, his God was his belly, he sold his birthright for soup, who minded earthly things. Okay? That's why God hated Esau. But uh, we're not done. We're not done. Now we're going to read verses 30 under verse 40. Okay? Verses 30 under verse 40. And it came to pass, as soon as Isaac had made an end of blessing Jacob, and Jacob was yet scarce gone out from the presence of Isaac his father, that Esau, da -da -da, <laughs> his brother came in from his hunting. And he also had made savory meat and brought it unto his father and said unto his father, Let my father arise and eat of his son's venison that thy soul may bless me. 
And Isaac his father said unto him, Who art thou? And he said, I am thy son, thy firstborn, Esau. Now, remember how we had just looked at a little while ago about how Isaac was like, you're Esau. Sounds like Jacob, but he, he, his, he feels like Esau. Well, I guess it is. Why? Verse 20, because the Lord thy God brought it to me. And, then, and Isaac said unto his son, how is it that thou hast found it so quickly, my son? And he said, because the Lord thy God brought it to me, because God hated Esau, because he despised his birthright. Now, that trepidation that he first had, but then he was like, Isaac was like, okay, fine, I guess, I guess it is. And it wasn't because Isaac was dense, but God was involved there. Do you see that? And when it comes to the to Esau himself, there's no trepidation. He's like, who are you? And then Esau's like, I am thy son, thy firstborn Esau. Look at his reaction. And Isaac trembled very exceedingly and said, Who? Where is he that hath taken venison and brought it me? And I have eaten of all before thou camest and have blessed him. Yea, and he shall be blessed. And when Esau heard the words of his father, he cried with a great and exceeding bitter cry and said unto his father, Bless me, even more me also, O my father. He minded earthly things. Remember that, uh, I forget what mountain it was, but God allotted a certain portion unto Edom. And when Jacob wrestled with God in basically repentance over what he did, of how he obtained God's blessings, and then after wrestling with God for what he had done in the past, God gave him his blessings, okay? Okay? Esau was more than satisfied with what he had because Esau minded earthly things, which is why God hated him. He despised his birthright, which the blessing which Jacob stole, basically, but God gave it to him. The blessing that Abraham and Isaac got was supposed to go to Esau, but Esau didn't like that because he was hungry. God hated him for it, okay? Gave it to Jacob, okay? Esau minded earthly things. He was more concerned about kingdoms and stuff. He was more concerned about the blessing. And what a blessing indeed! But any repentance on Esau's part about that he sold his birthright for a thing of pottage? Where Jacob had repentance when he wrestled with God because he was going to face his brother Esau for what he did. There's a difference between the two. Do you see that? I hope you do. Let's continue. And verse 35 dawns on him, obviously. And he said, Thy brother came with subtlety and hath taken away thy blessing. Who else could it have been? And he said, Is not he rightly named Jacob? For he hath supplanted me these two times. He took away my birthright. He took away my birthright. Look at that. Look at that. And behold, now he hath taken away my blessing. And he said, Hast thou not reserved a blessing for me? Look at that verse. Did Jacob steal his birthright? No. Esau, Jacob didn't steal anything. He really didn't. He's like, here, give me your birthright. He didn't steal anything from him. I, I believe Jacob understood, had respect more for the birthright than Esau did, which is one of the reasons why uh, things happened the way they did, obviously. But Jacob stole nothing from Esau. All he did was offer him a thing of soup. See, Verse 20, um, verse 36, Esau is exhibiting the old man. 
You know how Saul, when he got confronted, it was the people's fault. Yeah, I messed up. Yeah, it was the people's fault. Adam, the woman that thou gavest me, she gave me of the tree and I did eat. Right here. Right here in Esau. Do you see that? Look at it. He took away my birthright. He did take away his birthright, yes. But did he steal it or by, you know, subtlety? No. He's, he's like, Esau was, oh, I'm so faint. I'm so hungry. I'm going to die. Give me your birthright. Oh, what does this birthright mean? I'm going to die. Okay, here. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, here, by the way, here, here's some bread. Here's some wine. Go ahead. You figure it out. And at this moment, it was too good. It was, it was way too late for Esau. We're, we're going to look at that. But did Esau repent? No. No. See, what Esau could have done, it would, it, I doubt it would have changed anything, but it's like, I sold my birth right away. It was my fault that this has come upon me. No, he blamed Jacob. Jacob was to be blamed, yes. But was someone forcing Esau to sell that birthright to Jacob? You see, dear friend, God hated Esau because God, um, Esau chose that what was for only himself and had nothing in mind for the Lord. And when you are saved by your own belief and say that repentance is a work. It's going from unbelief to belief. Calling on the name of the Lord is a work. Only those who are saved can have godly sorrow. <laughs> you're all about your flesh. You're all about yourself. You're all about your father, the devil. You're just like Esau. Do you not see? Hmm. Again, why did God hate Esau? And why don't you want to accept the fact that there are people God hates, but cling to God loves everybody, God's love is unconditional? Because if you accepted the truth of the scripture as it is, then you might have to wrestle with the fact that it might in fact be you whom God hates. And feel good. I Trust me, I know. Because when I realized that God hated me, it scared the hell out of me, boy. I, could, I couldn't call on his name quick enough. Oh, but you don't want to hear that, do you? You don't want to hear that. You're going to hear it. And I hope you hear it. Because if you reject it and you go to your grave, you're going to be reminded, by the way, that you were warned at the great white throne of judgment. Every single one of you who rejected, who heard the Lord at the great white throne of judgment for you lost people, I sent this my servant. I sent that my servant. I sent this my servant. I orchestrated this. You said no. Depart from me. Ye who work iniquity. Ye who work iniquity. I never knew you. Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in thy name? I never knew you. Let's, let's continue. And Isaac answered and said unto Esau, Behold, I have made him thy Lord, and all his brethren have I given to him, and all his brethren have I given to him for servants. And with corn and wine have I sustained him. What shall I do now unto thee, my son? Look at Esau's reaction. And Esau said unto his father, Hast thou but one blessing, my father? Bless me! Even me also, O my father! 
And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. Was he concerned that it's like, Lord, going to God's, Lord, I messed up. I'm sorry. I deserve this. He couldn't have changed things. But he could have man, manned up and been like David. This is way before David, obviously. But he could have been like David. Being like, I have sinned. I'm at your mercy, Lord. Your will be done. But no. No. He didn't take any responsibility. He put it all on Jacob. Jacob was to be blamed, but no one was holding a gun to Esau's head, was he? Was there? No. He chose what God hated. You're saved by your own belief? You're choosing what God hates. Why? Because you're not wrestling with God. You're not wrestling with the fact that you're no good and that it's your fault. And you deserve to go to hell. And you can go there. You see? And Isaac, his father, <laughs> here's, here's his second place blessing. And Isaac, his father, answered and said unto him, Behold, <laughs> thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth, he minded earthly things, remember? And of the dew of heaven from above. And by thy sword thou shalt live, and shalt serve thy brother. And it shall come to pass when thou shalt have dominion, that thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. And you read uh, throughout scripture. What is it? Obadiah? Book of the prophecy of Obadiah? Stuff like that too? Yeah, that's exactly what happened. And also, our Lord says, you shall not ab abhor an Edomite, for he is thy brother. Okay? They make, they mend up here in uh, Genesis chapter 32. You read that on your own time. Okay? They do. They do. But see, now go, look at verse 38. And Esau said unto his father, Hast thou but one blessing, my father? Bless me, even me also, O my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. Go to Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. Some of you just don't get it. You don't want to get it. You don't want to get it. Some of my enemies who would drive me over and bludgeon me to death with a baseball bat are very intelligent men. But yet, they, they, their brains are filled with rocks for refusing the true gospel and wanting to serve Satan. You're, you're, you're guy, you, you devils, you're the brilliant ones. You're brilliant. Right. Hebrews chapter 12. Verses 12 on to verse 17. Wherefore, lift up the hands which hang down, and the feeble knees, and make straight paths for your feet, lest that which is lame be turned out of the way, but let it rather be healed. Follow peace with all men, and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Peace with all men, and holiness. You know, being separate than that, and considering that the book of Hebrews is written for the who? Hebrews, during the time of Jacob's trouble, uh, yeah, them Hebrews are definitely going to have to be separate than that because the mark of the beast is going to be implemented. Okay? This is instruction in righteousness. Let's continue. Look diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Hi. Hi. I have had bouts of bitterness. Some of you can even see it in my videos. Yes, I've had bouts of bitterness. Bitterness. It's a, it's a nasty thing. It's a nasty thing. Lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you. Bitterness troubles you. Did we not just see that in Esau? Let's continue. 
Let's read that again. Looking diligently, lest any man fail. Did I say fall? Excuse me. Fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as he saw, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. For one moment of mere pleasure, you sold away everything. Have you counted? Have you counted the cost? Have you counted the cost, what it means to be saved and of the church and the living God? Have you counted the cost of what that sin you're messing with going to cost you? Oh, I'm going to go to heaven. Yeah, if you're saved. Sure. But apparently, our Lord's honor who died for you, saved you, and dwelt within you means nothing to you. Well, yeah, it does. Then why are you bringing shame upon him? Your life is not your own. For ye know how that afterward, we just looked at it, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. For he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. Like it says, he could not have undone what had been done, but he could have been a man and at least said, I deserve this. I can't fix it, Lord. I deserve what's coming upon me. But he didn't do that. What did he do? He pointed at someone else instead of himself. Didn't he? Why did God hate Esau? Because he chose himself over God, more or less. Why does God hate some of you? Because you choose yourself over God, nonetheless. I know you got a lot of problems. A lot of you have a lot of problems with God hating anything, anybody. But it's an undeniable fact. Like I said, I'm going to link uh, our brother's two videos on that. A very good, meticulous, thorough, methodical. Praise the Lord. It's what, uh, what our brother is good at. <laughs> uh, I'm going to link those two videos. Look. See, you, you've fallen for God's unconditional love. That stems from Catholicism, the ecumenical movement, okay? That's what these Christians preach to you, okay? And perfect hatred is derived from judgment. Judging ourselves and judging according to the scriptures. And incidentally, you run, <laughs> you run into people who say to you, well, you're a sinner, you can't judge me. The people who say you can't judge anything because you yourself are a sinner. <laughs> Here's what you do. Okay. Brother. Okay. You're running into people saying you can't judge me because you're a sinner. Only someone who is perfect can judge me. And uh, according to them, no one is perfect. Not even God. Uh, here's what you do. You go to 1 Timothy chapter 1, uh, verse 15. This is a faithful saying. And worthy of all acceptation, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. Paul just called himself the chief sinner. Okay? He's a sinner. He's a saved sinner. Okay? And then what you do is, uh, we're not going to go through it. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Okay? Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Okay? Uh, verses 3 on to verse 5. For I verily as absent in body, but present in spirit, have judged already. But yet, Paul said he was the chief sinner. But yet he's judging people. Remember this, brother. Are you, write this down. 
Okay? Keep it on you. Write it in the scriptures. You run into this? I've run into this before. This shuts them up. Usually, if they want to keep arguing, then you just say, hey, 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 go away, buddy. Okay? But, okay, for I verily as absent in body and present in spirit have judged already, as though I were present concerning, as though I were present concerning him that hath so done this deed. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when ye are gathered together and my spirit with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, to deliver such an one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. But Paul was the chief sinner. And then, if they're, they're like, they look at you kind of like, well, wait a minute. That, that, take them to Romans chapter 7. Romans chapter 7. About Paul talking about his struggle with his pride, his sin. Okay? Take them to, uh, what is that, 2 Corinthians, uh, where, he, the, where he talks about his thorn in his flesh. Paul was, called himself the chief, chief of sinners. But yet, look at verse 13. Uh, verses, uh, excuse me, verses 12 and 13 in 1 Corinthians chapter 5. For what have I to do to judge them that are, uh, for what have I to do to judge them also that are without? Do not ye judge them that are within. But them that are without God judgeth. Therefore put away from amongst you that wicked person. See, Paul was the chief sinners. But he judged people. For sin, even though he was a chief sinner. You read Romans chapter 7. Paul talks about his struggle with sin. Okay? Okay, brother? Mark that, you know, okay? Get your pen, write it down, you know, keep it, keep it here in your Bible or, or excuse in your scriptures, excuse me. See, even I mess up. Wow! Yeah. But keep it in the scriptures, underline them. You run into that again, brother, you hammer them with that. Oh, you can't judge me because I'm because you're a sinner. Sinners can't judge. Judge not. Shut up. Then take them to First Timothy, and then go accordingly. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I've, I've personally run into that. <laughs> well, you're a sinner, Brad. You, you, you used to be you, you used to be a sodomite. <laughs> okay, you used to be a drug addict, and you're judging me. Yeah, that's right. What do you think of Paul? Well, Paul was a god godly man. It's like, yeah, but he was also a sinner who was chief, and he also judged people too. <laughs> well, he was had a special relationship with God. You don't. Bye-bye. 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 Yeah, don't let the door hit you in the buttocks on the way out. Bye-bye. Go see that pier that's short. Go take a long walk off of it. You know, put your head in the sand and go ahead. Go ahead. Sing Kumbaya. Yeah, yeah, bye-bye. Leave them alone then. They're not going to hear you. Why? Because we already looked at it. Um, God has closed their eyes. Because they have chosen themselves over that which is true. Over our Lord Jesus Christ. Over the scriptures. And there again, brethren, people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's one reason, that's the reason, isn't it? You don't want to accept the truth of the fact that there are people who God hates. Because if you exceed onto the truth of the matter, what if that means he hates you too? And if you come to that realization and that truth of the matter, that uh, God hates you, what are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? Very quickly. There was another firstborn who messed things up and the right to the firstborn went to uh, someone else. Do you know who that is? Hmm? You know who that is? Go to 1 Chronicles chapter 5. 1 Chronicles chapter 5. 1 Chronicles chapter 5, verses 1 under verse 2. 1 Chronicles chapter 5, verses 1 under verse 2. 
Now the sons of Reuben, the firstborn of Israel, for he was the firstborn. But for as much as he defiled his father's bed, he went and laid with Bilhah, his father's concubine. So in relation, in a way, a stepmother, which was before the law. His birthright was given unto the sons of Joseph, the son of Israel. And the genealogy is not reckoned to be re is and the genealogy is not to be reckoned after the birthright. For Judah prevailed above his brethren, and of him came the chief ruler. But the birthright was Joseph's. Why? Go to Genesis chapter thirty-five. This is after Esau. Genesis chapter thirty-five. Let's point to this. Genesis chapter 35. One verse. Verse 22. And it came to pass when Israel dwelt in that land, Jacob, that Reuben, the firstborn of Israel, the firstborn of Jacob, went and lay with Bildah, Bilhah, his father's concubine. And Israel heard it. Now the sons of Jacob were the were twelve, and it lists the twelve. And remember, Leah was the hated over Rachel. Or uh, it was a, uh, it was Rachel, wasn't it? Or was it Rebecca? Rachel, yeah, Rebecca was Isaac's wife. Rachel, okay, sorry, came from Laban. What can I say? <laughs> okay, but Leah was hated over Rachel. But Leah. The lawgiver came from Judah. And who's the lawgiver? Who's the lawgiver? Beg your pardon, brethren. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. You know, the son of David, king of the Jews. Okay? But see, Reuben, because he lay with Bilhah, forfeited his birthright. Of all the ones he could have gone after, he went after essentially... I don't know what that is in relation, um, basically a form of a stepmother. But see, this was before the law. This is before the law. Go to Genesis chapter 20, okay? Go to Genesis chapter 20. This is before the law. You can liken this kind of on to how, Bil, uh, how Reuben lay with Bilhah. You can liken it kind of on to Ham's sin. The sin of Ham, okay, who went in and saw his father's nakedness. There was nothing sexual there, like these devils like to say there was. But what happened was he dishonored his father. The Ten Commandments come after. Honor thy father and mother that it will go well with thee in the land that thou shalt uh, possess, okay? Honor your father and mother. Ham didn't honor his father and mother, but that was before the law. But yet, that is what his sin was. But that was before the law. Reuben lay with Bilhah, his father's concubine. Okay? Which is forbidden in the law. Okay? But that happened before the law. What, 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 what gives? Genesis chapter 20, verses 1 under verse 6. And Abraham journeyed from thence toward the south country, and dwelt between Kadesh and Shur, and sojourned in Gerar. And Abraham said of Sarah his wife, She is my sister. And Abimelech king of Gerar sent and took Sarah. But God came to Abimelech in a dream by night, and said to him, Behold, thou art but a dead man, for the woman which thou hast taken, for she is a man's wife. Note this. But Abimelech had not come near her. And he said, Lord, wilt thou slay also a righteous nation? Shall not the God, the judge of all the earth do right? Check this out. 
said he not unto me, She is my sister? And she even herself said, He is my brother? In the integrity of my heart and innocency of my hands, have I done this? So, Abraham, which he should not have done, you see this is something that even Isaac did. You know, she is my sister. Okay, got that from his daddy, his father, excuse me. Okay, but Abraham shouldn't have done that. And because of that, Abimelech's like, that's his, your sister. And wow, apparently Sarah, even in her old age, was, Mwah! so he takes her innocently. That was the custom back then. Okay, that's how things work. He was innocent. It's like, that's your sister? Uh -huh. Come on, get her. She's mine. I like that. Hey, okay. But see, had he had known that she was a man's wife, he wouldn't have done that. How would he have known that? Let's, let's finish this. Verse 6. And God said unto him in a dream, Yea, I know that thou didst this in the integrity of thy heart. For I also withheld thee from sinning against me. Therefore I suffer, therefore suffered I thee not to touch her. And then let's read verse 7. Now therefore restore the man his wife, for he is a prophet. The first appearance of the word prophet in the scriptures right there. And he shall pray for thee. And thou shalt live. And if thou restore her not, know thou that thou shalt surely die, thou and all that are thine. Because he took another man's wife. Now, that was before the law. How would he have known that it was wrong to take another man's wife before the law? Okay. Why was it, so, what did Ham do before the law about not honoring his father or his mother? Which is why Noah cursed him. But that was before the law, right? Romans chapter 2. Romans chapter 2. See, this is something too you guys ain't going to get away from. Romans chapter 2, verses 12 on to verse 16. For as many as have sinned without law shall also perish without law. And as many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. For when the Gentiles, or not Hebrews, which have not the law, do by nature the things contained in the law, these having not the law are a law unto themselves. The laws are written in man's hearts even though you, a lot of you don't want to accept that. How do you instinctively know that it's wrong to kill? Where do you get that from? Where do you instinctively know that it's wrong to cheat on your wife or to go have an affair with a married woman or you women, a married man? Hmm? How do you know it's wrong to steal? Because it's there in your heart already. But see... We, as man, are born into sin. See, it's there. It's there. Okay? You have that from God. You do. Okay? But, let's continue. Verse 15. Which shew the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness, and their thoughts the meanwhile accusing, or else excusing, one another. In the day when God, now here's the tie-in, in the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. There are those of you who might see that and say, well then someone doesn't need to go to Jesus Christ because the law is already written in our hearts. Read verse 16, genius. In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. How that Christ Jesus died for our sins according to the scriptures. And he was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Eh, no, 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 no. You're not going to skirt that. He, he puts it right there. What is this talking about? See, you know that it's wrong to steal. It's wrong to lie. It's wrong to commit adultery. It's wrong to commit murder. Where do you get that from? 
because the law is written in your hearts. But see, you want to serve yourself. You don't want to serve God. You love yourself. You love the things of the world. You love your flesh. You love pleasure. Your God is your belly and you mind earthly things. See, the law is there, but you don't care because you love earthly things and your God is your belly. How can, see, this is something that behooves me. You easy believers of devils. You, you guys who teach it, who are proponents of it, okay, you especially, you know what you're doing is evil. You know what you're doing is evil. But your conscience is seared with a hot iron, and you're serving your father the devil. I don't understand. I get it. I get it, but I just really... How come someone can't figure out that just just simply believing and not having to wrestle with your self-righteousness and having any sorrow or fear of the Lord, but just believing, how it doesn't make sense. A lot of you lost people who have contacted me. You're right. It doesn't make sense, does it? Just believe. You mean... Just believe and I'm safe. What about repentance? Oh, that's going from unbelief to belief. Yeah. Doesn't make sense. Why is that? Because these people who are easy believism are just like Esau. Their God is their belly and they mind earthly things. Because their father is Satan. And Satan is a fan of man. He loves flesh. God hated Esau because Esau despised his birthright and chose the things that he delighted not in, delighted not in, and uh, that's why. That's why God hated Esau. And again, if you're not coming to the Lord on his terms, but going up another way. You are a thief and a robber. You are a child of wrath, a child of disobedience. And guess what? God hates you. God loved you, past tense, the cross. Go to him on his terms. Yes, that's there for everybody. But you don't want to wrestle with that, do you? Do you? Do you? You know deep down that it's wrong. You know deep down, don't you, that something's missing with your flimsy, satanic little just-believe doctrine without wrestling with brokenness and contrition and having no fear of the Lord. And you even contest about people calling upon the name of the Lord. You don't get it because you lost. Again, The reason why you're harping to the God loves everybody, God's love is unconditional. Because what if, if you would believe the truth like you ought to, what if that means that God hates you? It's a scary thought. And it's one you need to reckon with. You can't hide behind uh, Ezekiel chapter 18 and the, the Sermon on the Mount there, boy. Ezekiel chapter 18, lest they repent, okay? Turn from your self-righteousness, okay? The kingdom of heaven, the Sermon on the Mount, okay? Love your enemies. The person who is the enemy of the Lord is going to have to immediately, directly deal with Jesus Christ personally on the throne. Oh boy, okay? Different dispensation. Today, we love any, our enemies by telling them, hey, you're going <laughs> off of a cliff, stop. But no, what do you guys like to do? Keep running! Keep running! Because misery loves company. And you have pleasure in those who do the same thing, don't you? Just like it says in Romans chapter 1, verse 32, right? Please consider these things. Please consider these things. Because these people who are preaching this love gospel thing, they don't love you. They hate you. 
and they're trying to damn you to hell, but this is the same place they're going. Please consider these things. Okay? Anyway, that's going to be it for this video. Um, there is technically a part two to this, which will not be coming today. It will probably be coming Monday. Okay? But yes, there is a part two to this, definitely. Uh, uh, it's not going to be the same thing, but you'll, you'll see. It'll tie into it. Uh, rebellious Children, uh, which is the one that I've been wanting to do now for over a week. But then uh, it, the Lord showed me, it's like, I want you to split it up into two different videos. It's like, okay. So, thank you, brethren. Thank you, sisters. We love you. We're praying for you. And thank you to every single one of you. We'll see you in the next video.